compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action, and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. This wonderful region preserves a lot. This wonderful region preserves a lot. Just wish and you'll find it yourself. At the foot of the mountain Kokshe, where according to the legend, there is a throne of Ablai, has shot up an octagonal steel. This is made in the form of a bundle of arrows, a symbol of unity. This is the main part of the yurt. They signify the unity of the people living under a peaceful sky. There are four shields on the steel. There is Ablai on a snow leopard in front of us. The snow leopard symbolizes the future of the country. Also, you will be told that this is where the main site of Ablai is situated. Here, he will also gather all three Jews and went to fight the Jungars, and you'll be told a legend, according to which is necessary to bypass the stone throne and make a wish. Baravoya, Ablai's clearing, which is perhaps the most popular tourist route in Kazakhstan, but it is really that place where the Khan's main site was located. The folk legends say that Ablai led big events here, such as military training and big meetings. There were two sites in Baravoya, not just one. But in order to prove this, we still need to do the excavation. Chapter 1. History in Titles. It was a vague and troublous time, but no one would believe it. Looking at the numerous flocks of sheep with lambs slowly wandering over the steppe, at peacefully grazing cows during the transition, at children galloping at the heated arguments between the caravans, only tightly tangled groups, sparkling iron armor, and helmeted horsemen at the edges of the caravan reminded us of the war. They reached the Green Valley, which was conveniently located between the hills, known as the Field of Ablai. Time was really unclear in the 18th century. On one hand, the eternal enemy, the Jungars, who were badly battered by the Qing Empire, but nevertheless represented a substantial threat to the Kazakh people. And from the other hand, there were two powerful empires, China and Russia. When Ablai was just 20, he was sent to Kokchatau in 1733, so he could rule the Kokchatau region in order to strengthen the northern and eastern borders due to the expansion of the Russian Empire in Kazakhstan. The reports of Russian officers say that Sultan Ablai had nomadic camps near the river shore in the second half of the 18th century. The Kilshakti River that materialized from late Shortenkol fed the Kokshtetau lakes, Kopa and Chagli. They say that in those days there was an abundant river, people even floated on it. According to the legend, the future Khan was born in Turkestan, but by fate's unfortunate demand, a descendant of Juchi and Janibek was hiding his empathy. According to an unconfirmed version, he was one of Tolabi's shepherds, and they say they call him Sabalak. The war with the Jungars, the famous battle with the Kamlik prince, resulted in captivity, prisoner rescue, and deserved recognition. Regarding Sabalak, they say he was a ragged child, which is not true. At the end of the name, there is a KH letters, Sabalak. In Mongolian, it means warrior. There were honors rendered by ancient custom on the edge of the wide lake of the northern land of Kokchatau. They washed Sabalak in white mare's milk. They also sacrificed a white stallion for him, seated him on a white felt mat and proclaimed him as a Khan. The black village gave him six girls to make his wives and six white yurts. When you were 25 years old, the bird of happiness sat on your head, put you on the throne. This is how Bukhar Jarao poetically spoke about this event. 
According to the legend, when Ablai was proclaimed as Khan, he was raised on a white rug and seated on the throne. This granite throne, the legend has it that he got luxury yurts and also got 60 camels, 600 horses, and 6,000 sheep. Abil Mansur then became known as Ablai Khan. On the bank of the lake, there were lavish celebrations which went on for a few days and were called Hankole. Hankole means Khan's Lake. It is now about 30 kilometers away from Kokshetau, near a Kazakh village. It is connected by historical information or by folk sources which got their names from Ablai, Wali Khan and Kenesere. These natural fortresses, the royal officer wrote, Ablai used for protection against enemies. The enemy usually attacked in summer, and during the summer months, Khan Horde was in a glade in the woods near the cliff, Ogchitpes. Day and night, the observer was on his duty at the top of the peak so the attack wouldn't caught them unaware. The Kazakhs called the glade Ablai's Glade. It is typical for the history of Kazakhstan that the place names carry a certain meaning associated with the origin of historic events. The governor, for example, or simply human. At all times, Ablai found in these mountains convenient and reliable sites. A mountain, Ogjitpes, is closely linked with his name. There is a legend of a Kalmyk girl who was captured and who was forcibly married to the one who could shoot an arrow to the top of the cliff. But still, the Kalmyk girl could not reconcile, so she jumped into the lake and turned into a rock, Jumbaktas. Gently rocking his wings, the eagle flies over the legendary mountain. According to one tradition, these birds, which in large quantities are found in Kokchatau region, also associated with the great Khan's name, they say that they appeared from the time when the Khan Ablai was raised on the white rug. They assured that the golden eagles of the rock are given into the hands of only the selected hunters, and usually only those whose veins flow with the ancient bloods of Ablai. And if there wouldn't be any sons in Ablai's race, who can tame them? They would leave the rock, Okshtetpes, but they still fly. Look out for prey. Secrets are kept. So where was Ablai's site? Chapter 2. The Square near the Kokshetau Mountain. In the Horde, or the White Village, there were so many yurts, and when they were set, a vast steppe space acquired immediately habitable appearance. From a distance, the rich white felt on the mat on the grass seemed young, swan flock which sat down on the waves of the green sea. What's in the documents relating to Ablai Khan? There is basically correspondence, or just the reports. There is a variety of materials and correspondence and the whole block of material. According to the writer and researcher Sabit Mukhanov, Chokan Valikhanov was working in Omsk archive and he found a thick notebook written in beautiful, legible handwriting. The book was called Ablai Khanat. An unknown officer was allegedly sent to gather intelligence. He described his visit to the Khan Ablai. Most likely, this was a long trip and took more than one month. And this is mentioned elsewhere where the Khan site was. More precisely, sites. Winter, summer, autumn. Ablai's sites were described. In the autumn, Ablai takes another peninsula as his site, Kotir. Only the coastal forests are much denser here. They do not only protect from the raids, but also from the autumn winds too. In addition, the lake gets dry several times in autumn, and then the islands appear on its surface. According to one version, the same site which now bears the name of Ablai Khan's glade is a summer site. When Ablai Khan was coming from his winter site, he was coming here and setting his yurts here and rested in the blossom of nature. Presumably, Ablai Khan had two favorite places in Kokshetau, which are called glades. 
The second Ablai Square could possibly be at the eastern part of the mountain Kokshatau, which is now, unfortunately, incorrectly called Ablai Khan's Glade. Why is that? Because it would be correct to call this place Ablai Khan's Square, near the Kokshatau mountain. Well, his first square was in a completely different place. Chapter 3, Khan Grove. In the spring, he lived on the western shore of the Big Chibachi Lake. That was washing the eastern slopes of Kokshe and Shabag. The west bank went into a lake as a peninsula. Its length is about four miles and half a mile in diameter. The waves rolled ashore, sand slit stones over time. The beach overgrew with birch, aspen, willow, and willow thorns. There is a beautiful view from a high hill. No enemy will approach undetected. And here is the lake, Big Chabache. This area looked different a while ago, right? It was a dense forest. It has been three centuries already. There was aspen growing, and because aspen had red leaves, people called this area Hanim Kuzulagash. But there are a lot of things that have changed in three centuries. Grove is no longer here, and there's a mud or a quicksand on the way to the lake. There is plenty of bream and crayfish. The lake is much closer as it was full flowing then. Yes, the lake was full flowing. Its edges were right here. Ulkan Shabakti. In Kazakh, it means Big Chabachi. Its real indigenous name, Kokshatau Shalkarai. And it consisted of two lakes connected by a strait, which was now called the Big and the Small. It was a big lake. Iblai located his winter site on the leeward side of this lake, in Redwood, Kuzul Agash. I spent the winter nights in a yurt, set next to the Khan, and surprisingly, when the tent is well heated, it is so warm, like a stone or a wooden house. The researchers claim that it was a winter site here. To be precise, Iblai Khan's square. There could be two glades. A glade to the Khan's yurt was set there for a close people and people who served the Ablai, and the other was intended for certain political activities, big meetings and assemblies to decide the affairs of the state. Allegedly, a diary of an unknown officer, which Mukhanov mentions about, had a topographical map, and on that map, all the places inhabited by Ablai were marked. However, this document did not survive. Only the legends collected by specialists. Among them, the director of a local museum, Amina Apai, it is thanks to her that the stone was placed here, so the descendants would not forget. There is a poem on the stone. You're like armor, Kuzulogash. Tragically, you grew poor these days. There's more valuable things than saint graves and alash armor. That became a whore to Ablai. Epilogue, Ablai's capital. Particularly important meetings, government decision-making, and just everyday ordinary life. According to incomplete data, Ablai Square was near here for several decades. Most likely, the archaeological survey could answer many of the questions more precisely. Were you able to find any artifacts confirming that this was where the site of Ablai was? Perhaps in these ruins, there is something that can be found from those items, some evidence. It must be dealt with by archaeologists. Has any archaeological research in this area taken place? No, it hasn't. This wonderful region preserves a lot. 
had a chance to see a lot of beautiful places in Russia and Western Europe, but I have not seen such a beautiful and comfortable place for the capital like this.